welcome Laura. Thank you, Thank, thanks so much Matt and um, it is always so hard going last with such excellent speakers and I was just reflecting on the last time I spoke at an LRC meeting and it was can you remember the massive fringe that you had at the 2017 uh, party conference and there were people like hanging from the rafters I was the warm-up act for John McDonnell uh, and I think there was an overspill outside because the meeting was so packed and then we move to today. Uh, this is a, an extremely well attended meeting and meetings like this actually do give me a lot of hope, not just that I can perpetually sit in meetings like this, but that there are good comrades uh, out there willing to organize again, well, in the now, but who could have ever have imagined uh, the events that would have followed that moment, that packed meeting in, in Brighton. I felt then it was like a truly hopeful time for so many people. Uh, there was a promise that in the not too distant future, we would have started our journey towards creating a world which was safer, more secure, warmer, brighter, where people didn't have to live in the greyness of their poverty, where the spirit of the most exploited and insecure would be collectively lifted from that place of suffering. That there would finally be a group of people in power who were on the side of the most oppressed in the United Kingdom and of course crucially across the world and we were defeated. Uh, we were defeated by some of our own, we were defeated by liberalism, defeated by a desire to stay in the EU above all else, defeated by the right, the far right, the hard right, we were defeated by so many factors and by the time the 12th of December came all of our collective, oh, sorry, all of their collective efforts to defeat socialism had aligned now, of course, that is a gross simplification of what happened, but I don't have time here to indulge in my own personal reflections. But our defeat was a defeat of a thousand defeats, um, not just one. Our defeat, however, in my mind, was not a defeat for socialism. I'm sure we do not see that one democratic exercise in the depths of winter as a referendum on a different world, far from it. We're sitting here today at the start of a global pandemic in the knowledge that there are 4.3 million children in poverty, millions of people working harder and longer hours than ever before and not able to pay their bills at the end of the month. We're sitting here today with an acute understanding that disabled people have been atrociously impacted not only by austerity but by this pandemic. Two in three people who have died from this virus are disabled. We know that uh, a threat was all in clear sight, that threat of climate breakdown and the resultant catastrophe is not a distant prospect any longer, but a daily reality. And we know too that with Trump and Johnson at the helm, war is ever present. And so to not feel completely and utterly dejected, we must look for what to do, because there are only two options, there's socialism or barbarism, and we choose socialism. We know, as other people have said, that there are no free market capitalist solutions to the multiple crises we face. We know that common ownership and democratic solutions are what will take us there. And therefore, I'm firmly of the view that we have to be more ambitious, more brave, more organized than ever before, both inside and outside of the Labour Party. I think to do this, we must seek to create and open up spaces which have been decimated by Thatcherism. The spaces that she knew was part of the way that we as a movement consciousness raised and organized as a class. We need to create those spaces which are useful to our class and our communities. So food distribution, cooking schools, welfare rights advice, clothing, solidarity grants when emergencies hit. And of course, those spaces must be political and unashamedly so. I think we must also refute a drive towards liberal politics from comrades masquerading as left wing. We know that conservative politics uh, and their ideology is what we are against, but the rise of liberal identity politics where we spend all of our time and energy focusing on the interpersonal forms of oppression and bigotry amongst working people and no time whatsoever 
and no energy whatsoever on the systemic, structural and global rise of fascistic, racist, neo-imperialistic neo thinking will take us further away, I believe, from our collective liberation. It will lead to only strengthen the right and lead to perpetual division on the left. What I'm not saying, comrades, is that, is that we shouldn't be utterly principled in the face of prejudice and racism and sexism, homophobia, transphobia, bigotry. That is what we do in solidarity with fellow working class people in all our beautiful diversity. But we know that those kind of challenges are one element of what we do, that it is the capitalist system which constructs the conditions which drive the deep inequalities and the endemic exploitation of our class. And we are against that system in favour of a new one. And I think that hope alone actually will provide us with only temporary comfort. It is our organising, our dedication, a consciousness raising of our loved ones, which is the source of hope. We must create those spaces that I mentioned, organise within them, build a powerful socialist current, yes, in the Labour Party, build strong and powerful resistance and organising capacity in the extra parliamentary movement against this government, all the while making the case for what can be possible and what can be different. I am always of the belief that we have the solutions. We ultimately have the power. We have the skills and the knowledge. We just have to be organised. We have to get organised and we have to take control and be ruthlessly focused on the task at hand. I, I look forward to joining you in that fight. Many thanks, comrades. And, uh, Thanks for kind of supporting the Grassroots Six uh, for the NEC in whatever way you can. Thank you, Matt.